All right, we're recording. We're good to go. Kyla, Nicole, you want to start? Cool, yeah. Um, I'm going to go first. I am I did very, very small things. The only thing, actually, let me share my screen. Give me one second. Um, yes. Okay, cool. So the only things that I had to change on my wireframes was, wait, can you guys see what I'm doing? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. The only thing I had to change on my wireframes was before there was like a filter. Um, it wasn't, yeah, it was just like a category drop down menu that was articles before. Um, it looked like, it looked like this, but I changed it back. Um, I think you guys had said that like the something is not structured to suit that. So I took that out. Um, and this was the nav that I saw on Nicole's. So I just took this, but actually now that we're here, I just have a question. Should this be the, should the nav just be exactly what's on the CoronaWide website right now, or is this fine? I have the same question, so yes, please answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's fine, or we can just replicate what's on CoronaWide website. I, mm -hmm. I don't think that's a, a critical um, difference. Okay, cool. So that's just going to stay as it is then. Um, and then that was really it as far as this is concerned. And then I think the smartest thing is probably to let Nicole and Carmen speak to the script and those materials because they did a lot more work on it than I did. Yeah, I can go ahead and um, I'm trying to think of the best way to present this because we worked on... Um, the user testing script and also the prototype at the same time because they kind of go in hand in hand and in terms of like what tasks we need the participants to perform like during user testing and that also means like um that also means organizing the prototype in such a way that follows that test <laughs> uh, that testing script so i think what i'll do is um i'll go through the prototype first um because it also includes carmen's um uh screens um Okay, you can all see the screen, right, of my Figma file? Yep. Okay, great. So close this. Actually, let's go to the this one here. Okay. Um, let's make sure this is in the home screen. Okay, so the changes that I mainly made, like, in terms of the search results page is that, um, well, first of all, in, in regards to, like, the filters, making these, like, collapsible, uh, colla collapsible in a accordion style so that, because initially it was, um, it was pretty long to the point where it came off the page and we wanted to keep it fixed so it stays within the user view. So uh, I think it was Karen who suggested um, doing this sort of style where they can just uh, toggle between um, each filter and they can make changes accordingly. So that's one thing. And then uh, there was also things in terms of like adding this, like the um, uh, fixing the search bar, like making it more, like match more like Hala's um, the search entry with the tags and um, there's also a thing regarding this is like a prototyping like figma issue but the issue of trying to figure out like how to make the like this abstract um scroll through as you're scrolling through the page and carmen actually figured that out thank you again carmen for figuring that out because i was struggling with this but ideally basically what you do is um if you were to click on um a specific paper you can like the overlay pops up and if if it happens to be like where the abstract is pretty long uh, the user will be able to just scroll uh, down and see um, and read through um the other thing that we were talking about like me her and like kayla that uh, we wanted to bring up um i mean we kind of settled out like we settled on so initially like right now what we have is like you click on this button and it opens the overlay but we're also thinking like we, we're not sure if like this icon would translate well across like you know if it would mean the same thing to different like different users like if this uh, we're not sure if like it'll tell people like oh you need to click on this in order to open up this overlay so now we're thinking it, it can just be as simple as you click on the card itself and it opens up um, this overlay because I think right now for mentally that's what you do uh, you just click on it and it just pops up and in order to go to the full page itself you click on the the title itself and I think instead of that what I have here is you just have a button saying um, view full page. So that's something that we have in mind. I think like that would be an easy fix. Uh, it would just be a matter of removing this icon and just making it so um, you connect this like particular card to uh, making an interaction with like this particular card in Figma and making it connect to um, this. 
So, and other than that, I think. Um, Can I yeah. interrupt you really quick? Go ahead. Um, two things I'm wondering first on this, maybe to have like multiple paths, we could actually do both by allowing the title to be clickable as well as there being a button. I'm right. Not sure how you feel about that. No, I actually wrote that down somewhere and I forgot to mention oh, cool. it. But yeah, so like being able to click on, you're, sorry, you're referring to like this head right here, right? So being able to click on either this or this or mm -hmm. both, like in order to go to um, the full page of like the article. So yeah, I had that in mind as well. Good. I'm glad. Awesome. Um, the only other thing I was going to ask was for the locations filter. I'm now wondering if when you click on the locations, I'm imagining like that placeholder image is supposed to be similar to what's on the current proof of concept on the Corona Y website. But I'm actually wondering if it should, in order for it to be modified while the person is conducting a search. So let's say they switch from wanting to do a search in New York and now they want to search in like, I don't know, Korea or something. If they want to do that, the I think it would have to be visualized differently in order for it to be modified. Mm -hmm. um, I sped over my work very quickly, but what I have right now, I think, is a drop down. Um, that's also you can type, you can type, and then there's also yeah. a drop down something. Maybe mm -hmm. that would have to be. Oh, and it's actually not even visualized well because I didn't put a drop down icon. But I'll fix <laughs> that. So I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Does this make sense? I, I think yeah. For locations, I see the issue of like displaying mm -hmm. it, but I'd probably have underneath locations. A little bit like how we've got this hydrochloroquine tag with a little X on it. And it'd be like, if you've selected a number of things that end up putting, you know, they end up with a list of them. And then like the map could tag them globally if they wanted to. But then if somebody wanted to get rid of one of them filters, they'd just press X and it'd, it'd drop out just like you could do with the tags. I think that'd be the most like, because then it keeps like the, 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 the mechanics of how the tags work in in the filtering that'd probably be the easiest way i think but we'd have to test it to make sure it made sense but like having just a box you know like you like say seoul south korea with a little x on it and then like london uk whatever wherever the locations are or even just like south korea and india you know whatever it was so that makes sense to me the only question I have in response to that is what would the task, what would it look like when somebody wants to add a location rather than just removing one? Would they do I, that? On I the think you'd have level? a, I think smart thing is just having a little box underneath it. So you can keep adding them if you wanted to or take them away. So like a little search, a, 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 like a location based search system underneath it. So what people can go first? actually, mm -hmm. I'd put it on on the filter section at the left hand side with you know the fold away bit because if location is not important it's not going to take up screen real estate and if it is important they can fold it out oh well actually i want to find out if germany is doing a particularly good job so i'm going to look at german results so what i'm getting from that is that it, it's a combination of what nicole has and then maybe adding what we have on the screen right now to it like underneath. So you would use this entry field when it's formatted properly and it's understood as like a search or a drop down or whatever. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think with geographies, we're gonna have to be um, pretty open because obviously mm -hmm. some people are gonna search like continent basis. So I'm just gonna, I wanna know everything from Europe. Some people are gonna be like all of the United States north america could be an option so like we're gonna have to have like gradations of geography which is a whole data problem as far as my understanding with watching odi talks so right. like, how granular are we going to go are we going to go down the city are we going to have counties i mean like do we have ability to find that granularity of geographies globally think... i'm like i don't know if you know if that even exists but we'd need something like that mm -hmm. it might depend on um what's what is like highest priority um like what i don't think it's the highest priority yeah but it's something to think on yeah i only mean like what would an epidemiologist indicate is the most important thing when they're doing the research how often are they looking on like like with such granularity um but there are i don't have an example in this second but i think that i've definitely seen when i've done like video not video like online signups for subscriptions or whatever, when they're asking me for my location, 
the the text like the entry field i can put in new york but it'll give me new york new york united states and new york city new york united states um it'll give me like both basically um because of the fact that and it's also like in a drop down with recommended things i don't know if i'm even explaining that right but that was my idea going into it so that we could both have like broad and more specific yeah which is what goes back to the idea if somebody just types in america they might just get usa so they can just pick the whole of America. Or if they type in Europe, Europe would be an option because that would be still like, that's a large geographic area, but it is yeah. something people might be likely to search. But at the same time, somebody might search Germany or Bavaria, which is a region of Germany if it's important to them. You know, so we're going to have to have how, many, how much of that granularity needs to exist. I don't really know right now. But like you said, if you typed in, New York, you're going to get New York City in New York, or you could just get like New York State, and both of them would be options. So, like having that, like you say, choice of granularity would be important, I think. Cool. But I don't know how much geography is going to swing it, like how important geography is, or how specific think... geography is going to be on on searching. So that's going to be something we're going to have to ask questions on epid epidemiologists and researchers. Yeah, and I think it might be safe to say that in this iteration, if we stick with this example, um, if we stick with this example of like being able to do city, state, and country, or province, just depending on where it is that you are in the world, whatever, um, that I think suffices for now. And if like, because we're doing user testing right now, and I'll maybe like ask this question a little bit later, but this is just a Figma prototype. So there are always gonna be limitations because the prototypes work linearly anyway. It's gonna be a lot different when something is like, because I feel like prototypes, this is just my opinion, but uh, very briefly, they're in between like being static, but also interactive because of the fact that they work so linearly. So mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know once it's built the testing that we'll be able to do is there's still going to be variables that are not accounted for in this round of testing um and this may be one of them so we can ask questions now but i am okay with like um giving like a best like implementing like a ux like a best ux design practice if you will right now and asking questions and then maybe finding out later that something has to be modified so I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna get it right first if on everything first time. It's just an unrealistic expectation, really. Cool. Um, yeah, definitely something to think about. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, like the UK's geographies are really messy. Like we have postcode systems and county lines and local bodies and like they don't even match each other so and that's just what i know of uk and i'm assuming globally there's similar problems of a postcode is not necessarily the same as a local board which is not even necessarily the same as a county or like they don't all line up with each other so i'm assuming globally it's the same sort of problem so having like city makes sense like city county or city state depends on where you are in the world kind of makes sense as a options and obviously country and then continent Cool. And I, I think this is just a guess, but for those that are actually interacting with like the data set itself and how it's structured, this is something I don't know much about, but I feel like based on how the papers are organized, what the lo like what the typical structure is for location, like based on that format, I'll be able to, I think we'll be able to glean a sense of what the smartest thing to do is even from there, because it's we're just working off of those categories to begin with. And then it's an iterative process. So if something has to be changed, it'll just be changed. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna stop talking because that was way too long. Nicole, go ahead. No, no worries. Okay, um, I don't think there was much to add. I think I'll just go through the prototype. So there would be an option here. Um, if you were to like remove a tag, it would definitely like change the search results. And I try to implement that. And if you wanted to add that again, um, initially, I think like, Kayla, I think initially in the search entry, like in your um, side of the wireframes, like there is an option here to click on filters. Initially I had that, but then I realized it's already here. So mm -hmm. I removed that and I fixed that. And it's just, you just be, um, you would just have to basically like go through like this uh, filter, like according to filters and you can just add them again. So- What does the X button do? 
the one big right one. Here? The really big one in the search bar. Oh, in the search bar. I think I'm assuming uh, that clear is the search. Clears, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like a clear system. You know, for the longest time I like I put that there. Yeah, it was that it that was the idea I had in mind to like clear everything. And I don't know if that was the best way to um depict that. I think I just put that as a placeholder for now. I, I think like, it's probably yeah, it's it's probably a good idea to have, but it's also a good idea to probably not make it too easy because then in case someone accidentally clears a search that they were yeah. using. Yeah. I think maybe if it's uh, instead of an X, it could just be as simple as saying like clear search or something like that. But yeah, for for now, like that's what I put as a placeholder to indicate like there is that option to clear a search if it, if the person would like to. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> cool. So yeah, you can let's see. Well, you already Slava was just mentioning that um, in the filters, he'd think that um, we don't. There should be a space for authors, authors. and affiliations. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming um, affiliation means like universities or okay. research mm. bodies and authors obviously have been individual authors in case someone searches for a specific author because they're looking for papers on, on by that person or connected to that person, which, yeah, there's some sense to that. I don't know if we need that right now, but it definitely seems like a sensible thing to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I think, I mean, de definitely like that could be easily implemented, I'm sure, but... um. Hmm. I'm um wondering um actually I guess I don't know before that thing that I had taken out from the search bar that allows you to search specifically by authors or I forgot what the other thing, groups people something like that people places something um that was sort of spoke to that concern but I don't um, know that's in drafts right now um yeah, it's, it, I think it goes back to questions on granularities, like yeah, are people going are people going to be coming to this system to search for specific authors when PubMed is perfectly good at that job of looking at everything one person's done, or mm. things you know that's there's other places that are really good to search for one person or one organization's work, and I don't know if that is going to be something. But again, these are questions we can ask um epidemiologists if that's something that they ever really filter by or if it's kind of a surplus to requirement for the most part mm -hmm. yeah that was a part of i think why it got thrown out just on that screen anyway but i think maybe it would even be simpler if it was implemented the way i think Slava is insinuating but anyway go on yeah um i mean that's pretty much it oh and there's also in order to transition to uh requirements like wireframes you'd be able to if the user would want to be able to add it to their own library they can select um specific, uh, specific papers and then they can go ahead and add to the library and i think um in that nav the top navigation i think i forgot to change it let me go back i forgot to change it because i initially included the library and you could navigate to that library and i think i added this uh where is it this little notification that can allow you to transition to um, a specific library. And I think, um, well, yeah, this is like Carmen said with wireframes. Like, Carmen, did, did you want to like share your screen and talk about it? Or I yeah. can also just, I, I mean, can also just um, like state sharing my screen too. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, um, so I added a share library. So, you know, at the moment, just could share what they um, added to the library to other people. So when you click on it, you're able to share it through email or with a link. And you can filter the keywords. So for the first article, when you click on it. Sorry. <laughs> <Don't follow anything. laughs> okay. um, so this page is where you could see the full, you, where you could have like full access to the article. So my question is that, um, like what other things they are able to see if they have full access. Let me send a link um, as a reference. Like from, from this link that I just sent from PubMed, if you're able to like access your article, they have like abstract keywords and um, figures. So I'm not sure like how much um, information do we want on our end. So we could go back. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, I like, I like this idea of a library, which kind of goes back to this idea of collections or, like, these are important to me. Are we mm -hmm. going to be able to, like, have more than one library, for lack of a better word? Or is mm -hmm. it just going to be, like, one big list that people have? Because I'm kind of curious that 
one of my thoughts on this would be like like an Amazon wish list. You can have like 10 wish lists that are grouped into different things that you group them together. Well, like, that's how I yeah. use Amazon wish mm -hmm. So I'm thinking okay. that if someone is going like, I'm doing the, like I'm doing some research on this group of things, but I also have like a side curiosity of that group of things. Can Is there a way of like, yeah, more on, uh, more on like the collection that we discussed yeah. previously. Which, yes, we've called it collections before, but a library is a perfectly good term for it yeah. as well. Like, I don't know. But yeah, like the idea of going, and then that way we've got this shareable library or collection. Someone can like curate this list and it'll show what generated them, you know, these options and what tags are important in it. And then it also it makes it this sort of, we could make a library of collections that, you can literally make all these collections will be um, publicly available because unlike everything else, this is like people's collections. And you could even say like created by this person. So it's a case of, it goes back um, to that login hi. system and stuff. Hi, this is Siddhartha. Uh, I've got a suggestion there, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, my work and studies. So I use paper file. So there are already these things, you know, one note, end note, paper file. And there are usually links, like once you find something, yes, we could have a collection and library, sim maybe similar or different from paper file. Uh, but these e things exist and people often, once they find a paper, they want to add it to some kind of research work they're already doing. The problem with, you know, keeping a new one, it's good, but it's like uh, you don't want too many libraries uh, for the, what you're studying. So that's my thought. So is that but like it's, its own commonly used system is that a system that researchers use uh yeah i mean there's paper file there's endnote there's one note and and uh, the reason people use it is uh, like uh, they use it and they've got plugins so that uh you can easily reference and order the references when you're writing a paper because otherwise it's so, not the nightmare. so some sort of implementation to be able to like save it to these 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 or you can save it to the collection on the web on on this website yeah, so often, often like I have noticed, yeah. like with paper file, uh, there is no um, like uh, the uh, there is no way to go from say PubMed to paper file. There's no link that says add to paper file. But in paper file, I can search for uh, like a paper once I have identified it, and then there's a button that says add, and then add it to PubMed, and there'll be links. You know, like uh, once it finds like it'll. It'll reverse thing. Paper file to PubMed is there, so I can keep on adding to uh, PubMed. But it would be helpful, like if PubMed had a link and a button that says "Add to Paper File," and directly it goes to the Paper File. But I don't know how that would work because there's a login and all of that stuff. It seems like if you have an image, suppose you find an image on the internet, so you want to add it to your photo album. Um, so you you download it and you put the URL in your photo album. But uh, the image itself, like that website, may not have a button to add it to your photo album. I, mean, I don't know if that's a good analogy. Uh, yeah, I get what you mean. It's like not everyone wants to generate every connection to every tool because it's just an unachievable thing. So sometimes going around it manually, yeah. My main concern, I like, I love the idea for library, and, and I think like that's that's a that's a really uh, uh, you know powerful uh, way of, of uh, you know storing data and organizing it. Uh, of course, like it, it takes a certain amount of uh, infrastructure or, or like you know, thinking to uh, create a hierarchy because it'd be nested and everything and uh, display it like in a, you know, in a folder structure. Uh, there, but uh, even if you do it, like it, it would be similar to libraries which people are using and people may not be willing to keep multiple libraries. Like you do, the reason you're doing search is that yes, like this is a curated place like where you know, machine learning to identify papers of interest, but as far as adding it to a collection, you want to add it to a collection that you already have of 500 papers that you've built. And you want to add it to that in a certain folder structure. And there this paper file and EndNote are like things that people commonly use. That, that's my thought. I think the only problem with that, as much as that's great for like personal library storage, it kind of goes against the idea of being able to like easily share a collection of like, these are an interesting collection of things to someone else. So you can send um, it to your colleagues. The idea is like, here's one link, which gives you a collection of everything, the tags that are attached to it and the reasoning behind why I've collected this connect collection together. I don't know if- what? Yeah, one can share. One can share even in paper file. I know, but you need like uh, you also need to have uh, either so paper file like these. Some of them are like required, you know, paid options. So, for example, I have a paper file as a part of my graduate student lab thing. So uh, there's a lab G Suite account, and it's sort of I don't know how it's linked to the paper file, but uh, 
but what, what happens everybody has their own paper file uh, thing but there is people can share so i can share my my set of documents with somebody you know i can share my uh, my library i can share my collection with somebody else and i'm sure like uh, with uh, endnote and things like that i don't know with endnote but paper file certainly is there there are, i think a couple of like that there is others um, but i mean so i guess I, paper paper pile so a reference yeah. management system yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, okay. that, that, that's what it is. Mm. It, I mean, like, uh, definitely, yeah. So, so two things, one is shareable and the other is a collection. Um, but yeah, I definitely great. But the con is that, uh, I, I wouldn't want to create a new collection because it will be confusing. You know, where have I kept it? If it's, uh, if I can do it in one place and keep all my papers, that's good. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to keep it as library and no collection, right? I think, uh, I think you can keep it as um, either. So that was the difference between library and collection. I didn't quite understand. So um, it was just, we, we were using yeah. the idea of collections as a term and, and library is just a different term because it's kind of the same thing, really. I think it has to be grouped into separate libraries, whatever. Um, we're going to call it, but I think it has to be because otherwise there can be 20 papers that the researcher wants to use and they have to endlessly scroll to, or it can be paginated, whatever, and keep having to look for a specific title. And I think that they would get fatigue and the whole purpose of like having this is that it would be easy or... Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. especially important because obviously we're dealing with a data set of 150,000 and still growing. So we still might end up with like collections with 50 papers in it. And the idea is we're trying to get to them to get them to be able to get to the 50 papers as easy as possible and right. as well as possible. And then once they've found the 50 papers, being able to share it with other people so they can go, these 50 papers are interesting. We should definitely prioritize these ones for the research we're doing. Is the idea of trying to speed the whole process up. So making a place to have that collection makes the most sense. Um, Slava said something. What is useful for researchers to store results of search? Um, I mean, okay. the, the idea yeah. of like a collection would be if you could save a collection and the search that generated it as its own thing. So each time you have a new search that generated it, you probably end up with a new library and maybe the all, like new collection. And it'd have like the search that caused that collection to be able to be generated. And you could also maybe have custom collections from a number of searches if they're relevant, because obviously searching is kind of its own way. But I don't know. That's just my thoughts right now. I'm um, I really want this to be hashed out. So if I understood you correctly, collections and libraries are synonymous right now. And I'm treating them like the same thing. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, like a YouTube playlist. Exactly. Like a YouTube okay, playlist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, I think it should. De there should definitely be collections. And then to that point, there might need to be. Well, wait a minute. Filter by keywords. I'm confused about maybe the filter by keywords. If we were to imagine when you click on a specific library, let's say you're concerned with whatever topic A, and then you go to the collection for that or the library for that, whatever. Um, if you have 50 papers within that library, let's say this page that we're looking at right now, um, there's multiple results. If you wanna get to the one that you're looking for quicker, maybe instead of it um, saying filter by keywords, it would just be a search. It would be like a find on page almost, like a browser find right. on page. Like control F or whatever. Yeah, like control F, find on page, yeah. I mean, um, I don't know if you need to functionalize that in because find on page is part of every browser. <laughs> You're right. But then I'm also like, I, I know that, but at the same time, web pages will have like a print button, even though you can just do control P. So what do you think? Uh, I don't know, guys. What do you think? Anybody else? I'm talking a lot. Yeah, not sure about the... I think it's good practice to have a search because, I mean, you can say, um, I don't Maybe know. Maybe if the I, idea I, is to um, to basically have the functionality of of these keywords function as, um, those are the terms, right, by which these yeah, are. Yeah, they'd, like the, they'd be all the tags and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, that that is useful. 
especially if like i say we can rather than a collection of five which is obviously very small you can i can imagine someone collecting up like 50 relevant papers and then using this way as a way of curating back because they might go well i've got this collection that i'm now thinning back from because i've like collected up from 200 results 50 what i think are good and i get to this stage and now i can curate and actually them tags let's look for that oh well, that tag maybe isn't as relevant have a quick look oh no i can i can pull them ones out of this collection so like the keyword system might be a good way of like helping filter back to, to pair down to a really relevant and like get that that clarity of what someone's searching for so i don't i don't think it's a bad idea to have like a filtering system in here i don't think it's a bad thing at all um, I'm confused then just about the, so Carmen, maybe you could help me better understand what happens when you click on filter by keywords. Um, filter by keywords is like, you know, remember we have like, um, some keywords here. I mean, uh, the search bar. Yeah. So whatever is highlighted, it's going to be part of the keyword here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Right. So like, you know, doing the search, you have like multiple boxes with like highlighted things. Mm -hmm. If they're highlighted, then they will be part of this keyword search here. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I agree that that's a good, that's a good function. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, so the second article, um, you have like limitation of um, what you could see. So there will be like a, you know, a page like this at the bottom to tell them to like click on the full text view for access. And I remember um, someone mentioned you could have like option on publication. So when you click on the button here, that you're, one? yeah, you're able to choose different publication that you want to get into. So oh. when you select this, it will lead you to the actual article. But it, it, but if it was like only if it was only published by one, it'd say mm -hmm. take you directly to it. But if it was like PubMed or Elsevier, it'd pop up and go take me to the one that I want because that's right, the one right. I've got to log on for. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, the first one was just like one publication. So when they click yeah, on it, it would just only one, it just goes straight through and ignore right, the right. step. But if right. there's more than one, it gives you the options. Right, right, right. Yep. Great. So that's going to be the case. Yep. So when, when um, that happens, is it going to be like sort of a visual way of knowing what publication that's part of? Are we going to symbolize um, that saying well, published on? on there's the a screen? drop down, drop down icon here. So that but, will pop up. Without someone having to click on it, someone could see published on PubMed or published by Elsevier or published by whichever publisher it's got by. Would uh, we have something like that as a way if someone can just like, well, I've got a PubMed pub login and I'm logged in, so I could just click straight through it. There's an example of this here. I just sent a link on the right, left side, right side. I don't know. Yeah, side. the right side, yeah. That's like... I um, guess I could add this box too. Okay. Yeah. Some. Yeah. And that's yeah, probably could... an example. Some sort of visual, like these are the put. This is the publisher. That way, someone can at a glance know where they're going to end up when they click on it. Okay, I'll add those in. Because again, it's just about trying to make like cognitive load. They're not going to be like well, click on it to find out where I'm going to land. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to go. Well, I don't have an Elsevier login, so there's no point in me even wasting my time looking there because I don't have one, for example. All right, sounds good. I'll, I'll implement that over there on the right side. Yeah, that's all. Cool. Well done, everyone. Amazing work. Cool. Good stuff. Um, I just have a question before we go away from this. Um, for user testing, do you guys think that um, we should make things not be in like grayscale or should we leave it in grayscale for right now? I'm perfectly fine with grayscale. There's no point making it more complicated than that at this stage. Yeah, yeah I agree. I'm fine. I'm fine with grayscale. I think from my experience with the user testing for the other project, um, well, there were a few times where the when I asked for like first impressions on the page, they would often ask why is it in grayscale. <laughs> um, but I think I, I think what I said with questions like that is just I wanted to focus more on the functionality without relying on the use of color. So I think I think it's fine if we move on without um, grayscale. I think, it's, I think it's generally a good idea to not include color at the first stage of trying things because color mm -hmm. has a 
effect on design and emotional understanding of things. So taking right. that element out, we can definitely work out what's working and not rather than like, I just don't like the color. Like, I don't care if you don't like the color. <laughs> that's not, that's not <laughs> fucking important right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, okay, so that's settled. So we'll worry about that in the future, but... Actually, I think like this style, just my two cents here, it doesn't even look like it's a grayscale mm -hmm. to me. So for example, when I first saw just join kind of like all of this, like I know what people mean was like, oh, why it looks ugly because wireframes have all of this, you know, like areas with crosses, lorem ipsum type of, you know, wording and stuff that usually throws off like uh, potential users, but this one looks amazing in terms of implement, like execution of wireframes is indeed great over here. So I don't think we'll run into this issue that, oh, like why it's, you know, doesn't look like a finished product or something, you know. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, the wireframes are amazing, They're really well done. This is a uh, very nice for today. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, um, it's when once it's done, it's going to have some color, but it's not going to be a lot of color. It's not. Yeah. It's not going to be bright and loud and in your face and twenty different shades. It's probably going to be a simple aesthetic because it needs to be simple because it's not about aesthetic. It's about efficient thinking. Um, I'm curious to know. I think we talked about this last time, but about the development process for this, um, because I think. And maybe Nicole and Carmen, you can also chime in on what you think of this, but I feel like we should do a round of user testing right now, like with what we have here. But I am also kind of feeling like it would be helpful to continue to test once it's actually built. Um, but I don't know what the resources are, what that looks like, what the constraints are. So in terms of user testing, um, let's just um, write an email with a link to this clickable, uh, clickable prototype. Uh, do we have the link that um, is kind of like clean without any extra pages? Yeah, if I just share, like there's an option here. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people, but if like, if I can just set, um, yeah, if it's, as long as it's sent to just like, uh, just like can view and I copy the link um, and I share this link, it's just gonna share like, it would just lead the use the participant to this particular um, page. Like right now, this is the page for the prototype itself. Um, it won't directly link to all of this over here, so they won't have access to this. As long as this, if um, you'll show, you're, as long as you get the link from the share prototype button, it should be fine. Okay, so, uh, so can you? Would it be clickable prototype? Yeah. Or just like yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. That's I think perfect. Before we do that, Nicole, I have to connect my screens to yours. Yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> but um, but that's the only thing. Mine yeah. Yeah, because right now it starts from my mine, like from here. So yeah. yeah, it would just be as simple as like connecting yours and somewhere around here it would just go to mine. So if you click on show prototype setting. You could um adjust that really quick to like start with um. What Kayla has first. I mean, you can drag that thing. Oh yeah, I can. I, I can also <laughs> drag it to you. Oh, I didn't know that. I know. It's I didn't cool. know. That <laughs> I love that thing. Fair, Figma is made by UX people for UX people, so the ex user experience should be damn good. <laughs> it's kind of built for. <laughs> it's built by them people for them people. If they don't get it right, we're all done for. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had an, oh wait. Wait, okay, so after this is done, I'm really still wondering about, so once this is done and once we get their user testing, which Nicole, I don't know if you want to still talk about the script, but you guys did a really good job on working on that too. But the other thing I just really wanted to understand is like, I think I asked this before, what does the handoff look like again? Because I forgot. It's, it's, it's Anton and Sid. <laughs> it's oh, okay. like be, be, between them two, I've, they're going to be doing like either coordinating the technical side of it or doing the technical side of it or both, probably both. So is there anything, that's great because you guys are both here now. So is there anything like, as we, I mean, you guys have had the, like we've been going through this with you for a while, so you know, but is there, after user testing and et cetera, 
do you want us to set up annotations and what's most helpful for you? I mean, this is good. Uh, I, I think like uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great starting point. Um, the, mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, is there like, is there a way to convert this to HTML in some way or like that sort um, of thing? You can go to inspect and you'll be able to see the CSS styles. But that's also part of what I'm asking because I think that there are some, we can talk about this like Carmen Nicole and I later, but there are some margin things that I think have to just be a little bit more consistent and like white space that I'm curious to know if certain things can be shrunk or whatever. But once that's, um, oh, hey, what's this? Um, oh, cool. I don't know React, but maybe someone else. Can it, uh, I use Angular. I mean, it's similar to React, but I'll tell you like the steps that uh, I would do, like given uh, in a design. First, I would like see, okay, if there's an HTML and CSS, you know, that's always a great thing. Otherwise, <laughs> it's a pain. I, I mean, think, like, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's got, I think pretty sure Figma's got exporting systems that can at least export out into code, even if it's not complete functional code, it's, it's, it's the start of the bare bones. I'm pretty sure it, that's part of the reason why it works. It has got a code backbone. I think help. it's only, I don't know, Nicole, do you know? Because when I work with it, like, it's only CSS. I mean, I work with, like, a WordPress person, so it is a totally different thing. But no, no, I mean, whether it's WordPress or Angular or React, finally, the output is HTML, CSS. And one sometimes you won't even know what's happening in the back. And, that, and that's all good. What I need is like the the HTML CSS, which I can do a right click inspect and you know sort of starting point, and that's good. I mean that that's fine. And then you know basically, on one hand, like there are two things. One is the front end, like connect it to the components, and and then see like where you have to kind of hook up to you know call the make the calls to the back end, and then the other end is like have a functional API, which is like. Uh, you know, handling, uh, identify all the requests that are coming in from the front end and then, uh, you know, uh, access it from a database or file system and then serve it up. So that, that API is running in Python code in the back end, like that's independent of the front end. And then the front end, like Angular React, it receives that call and then, you know, you know updates its components and the DOM and then basically the HTML gets updated. That, that's the I mean, cycle. Yeah. I mean, like Slav is saying there that we could even connect it up to the actual data in da in the um, Corona Y database. Yeah, so we might even be able to test it with actual data before we even build it. I mean, that that certainly could be done. It's only like uh, the, the thing, if you, the whole point of, if if needed, like putting a layer in between, like a kind of, if you have to reformat and restructure the data to for this interface. But if it, you can like, uh, you know, that sort of optimizes it. But uh, sometimes you can directly call. I mean, there is if you have an API, as as Lav said, uh, I, I mean that's that's a very quick way to get it, getting it done. As long as it's a quick and dirty um, test. <laughs> yeah, we have to kind of identify the API. Like, show this. What is the call that is made, and do we have the API for that, or do we need to write a program that basically calls an a some API and creates the, uh, you know, uh, given that input, the output. So. For everything, so uh, like uh, you have a black box and that black box, so you have to say like, this is what I'm sending to the black box this is what I get out of the black box. Um, I mean, this kind of shows it, but we need to kind of itemize that because that that's what have to be done, you know, whether you call the API or whether you call a Python program. Um, okay, thank you for explaining that. That makes sense. What I understand from that bit is that well, what I sent was that there is a Figma to HTML plugin. I don't know how it works. I've never used it. That was just a very like first result. But I think if I know, if we figure out a way to get that to work and it does what it's supposed to do, I think we'll be able to cover the HTML and CSS. Um, but that is where my skill set ends. So the other stuff, someone else might have to help you with. Yeah, this is where the... The work of the actual backend uh, would have to be um, produced in terms of, um, we also have Alex Lofgren here on the call, who uh, was- I didn't even notice he was here. Hi, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. been a while. Hey, guys. But, this is good work. <coughs> yeah. Um, but Alex was actually uh, setting up the, the search functionality which could be transformed into um, the API call for SID to, to be um, integrated into the front end. 
yeah yeah that that's, uh, that that would be great yeah mm-hmm. uh, one quick thing i just followed the link that slava said so i guess like you know that's quite amazing that you can connect connect figma to uh, api and in the show but it uh, it it will like limit i mean like in in the sense that uh, yeah we'll have to be uh, that, that it won't be running in an independent server i mean it'll be running in this figma system so that's where the website would then reside uh, but uh, I, I, yeah i just just a thought on that but yeah i mean uh, what anton said is perfectly correct i'm going to um collect all of these links cuz my fear is that they'll get lost and i'm going to put them in a doc and then i guess i'll just share it so that well, when this comes up at the end of the call, if you look under the little three dots, you can just click save chat and it'll just, you can save the whole document of everything that's been said in chat and the links. Um, okay. Zoom's got save chat as a function, so you can save everything. Obviously, if you can copy paste the links if you want, but you might want to just save everything, <laughs> including the context of what's been written around it. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. We have like 10 minutes. Um, do you guys want to go through the script or do you want to? That'd be great. I'm in no rush. I'm happy to listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. I can, uh, let me look through my second module <laughs> to find the script. It's somewhere in here, there's too many tabs. Uh, okay, I think it's this one. So, uh, okay, let's see. So we have a script, a working script. Um, there might just need, need to be a little bit more um, changes here and there, uh, but this was taken directly from the other product that we were doing. So uh, it was like when we were working on this script for Corona Y, it was just specifically to, um, making changes in terms of the tasks that we would have the participants do. Um, it's basically like, I'm not sure if we should go from the top. Well, basically in the beginning, yeah, we actually, we, um, I mean, we have a email template here and Oh, there's also a survey. Oh, uh, wait, Carmen, were you able to get into the, or like make the survey? It's yeah, okay. yeah, I, I finished both of them. Oh, cool, okay. Okay, nice, so there's this, oh yeah, we have a survey um, just That's to, cool. yeah, because uh, it asked, um, it just asked a few basic questions. Like, it, of course, like they don't have to take so long on this, but just ask a few basic questions on like the occupation, what they do, what tools they use, their goals. Um, Things that are challenging, challenging for them. Um, I'm sorry. Give me a second. I have to <laughs> wait. I'm sorry. I had to meet myself and say bye to my dad. He's leaving for work. Hi. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard me le- uh, like yell, but <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, um, and then there's a section here. Oh yeah, just basically letting you know. I'm not sure if it'll take exactly an hour. Um, that I was, think it's a good idea to err uh, on the side of caution. I mean, yeah. it's better to, like, 45 minutes to an hour is not an unusual amount to go through a website. It might obviously take less, but there's still, you kind of want to do that context discussion as well. There's, like, it's not just testing the prototype. It's trying to get that sort of qualitative data from them and, and, and have a better understanding of their real problems. And then maybe what they see, the, you know, if any anything we've see, they've seen seems to solve any of their problems, but... Asking people is not always a good idea. Sometimes it's just better to see what they do. Yeah, like uh, in, in the other project, like we set it to an hour at most, but most of the time it went like, uh, I think at most it was, or for most of the time it was just 45 minutes. Um, but it definitely depends on the person that you're, the participant that you're using testing with. Sometimes they will they will talk a lot, which is, you know, that's okay. That's always like welcome. Like we always welcome that. So, um, but yeah, definitely like keeping it an hour at most, I think is fine. Um, and of course, like there's permission here if they would you know, like ask me for permission, permission to record, I think is also important, of course. And then um, there's also a section asking for time availability just to make it, you know, easier. I set it to, or actually rather Carmen like said it, well, actually in the original like survey, it was set to like nine, like a nine to five um, PM uh, window because that's the- I think having a broader time zone won't necessarily hurt if we're going international. I'm happy to do the later end ones or the early ones where you guys can't do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it suits. I wanna make, yeah. I want to make sure there's like enough, I don't know, like a big enough like time window that it's able to accommodate for uh, people's time zones. Um, hmm. I wonder if there's like a, is there a way maybe we could just put a Calendly link here? 
like maybe yeah. in the email mm-hmm. like Colin Lee or them we've, we were using one for meeting organizing I can't remember the name of it right now but yeah the whole where they could just literally pick meeting slots that we can assign right yeah and it could just be on Calendly the schedule would already be preset so and that way if anyone did we don't get two people booking the same slot for lack of a better word mm-hmm. yeah I agree. So maybe this could be taken out, but in the email that this survey goes with, we could put that hyperlink. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, let me zoom out. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. And then um, let me go back. So yeah, we is have. This, is this is linked in the um in Trello? Yeah, because I've seen the, some of the links. I've just not gone through them yet because I've not had time for it. I think this is right. It's um, yeah, I think. May, no, I think the one that's there is the school one. Oh, so that's mine. Okay. I think. Um... Oh, but. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, it's one of those things again where it's attached, but the description has something else. It's there. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, it okay, is there. Cool. It's the one under draft of script. So, okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. So, everyone can take a look at this like later on. But, um, yeah. So, we have the template for email itself. And then we have an introduction, just kind of giving them an overview of, you know, what they'll be doing for the best of, for the session. Um, of, we have a section here like for a warm up as in this would be a, a time where uh, we would show them like a couple of slides just kind of introducing to them like what um, coronavirus is and the literature review tool that we're building like things like that just to kind of get them in the mindset of like you know this you know this is like where you're going to be using testing yeah. today this this is the big picture thinking this is what yeah. we're trying to do yeah right and then first there's like a section for um, setting up the screen sharing and like telling them like you know make sure to close anything that if you don't like anything you don't want to be recorded um, I don't think this would be included. Well, that's fine. But then, and then after that would be like the portion where we have them perform like different tasks. And this goes in the same exact order of how the prototype is shown. Like, um, as I showed you like, you know, earlier um, in our meeting, um, like from the pre-search phase, I think like these first, these first ones that I just highlight are more in like in the pre-search phase that like Gala did. And then from D to, I guess like from here, just task G is mostly like from the search results phase, like the wireframes that I worked on and also, um, and then like from H to up and it's, the rest is yeah, just like in the- It's library, library interaction and things like that. Yeah, yeah, so it just basically, it goes like, you know, hand in hand with um, that sort of flow. And then after that, it's just, you know, follow-up section, like, you know, was there anything? Um, we give them, like, we just remind them like all the things that we did in the prototype uh, during the session. And we ask, like, what did you enjoy about the user experience of that? And then after that, we'd um, also ask if there's anything confusing. Um, there's also the option if there's, you know, uh, a part where if you have any follow-up questions about anything specific, um, maybe the participant asked something, like they had a question or they mentioned something in the session and you want to kind of follow up on that, like there's definitely that option as well. Yeah, um, it goes and- back to like good interviewing techniques of following things if somebody brings something up and digging into it to get really like understand if it's something they've really bumped into that right. we've never thought of, like we really need to like probe and find out what they mean by that if, we, if we've not like come up with that at all yet. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then after that, it's just like, you know, wrap up, like just, you know, <laughs> saying thank you. And then uh, we would just tell them like, we are going to send them a follow-up email after that. And the follow-up email, there's also the option to do a post-testing survey uh, that I didn't permission for, but <laughs> uh, I want to just more of like, you know, add up like rate from like one to five, like your experience with using this prototype. Um, I mean, the, there is that option, but from my experience, uh, from my other project, only one person ever did that out of yeah. eight people. <laughs> that so. Survey. so you've already got a survey up front and the actual time, the chances of getting them to do any more beyond that is is a big ask. I mean, yeah, it's, you know. Bit, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, well, there's that. Um, but yeah, that's what we have so far. I mean, in, in the post bit following up, we could follow up with, um, links to the community themselves if they're interested in about progr- progress or if they want to be more involved as well so as an opportunity to like yeah find out they're... like to let them follow up if they are interested i'm not saying they're saying they're gonna have time but they are obviously welcome to join the community to see how the discussions are going around trying to solve this problem right so yeah having think... have like promoting the idea that your com- communication beyond this is obviously valued in any way shape you want to bring to it and we're happy to have you yeah, I think there is an option for that in the post-testing like, survey where it's just like, you know, do you know anyone in your network who would be willing to do a user testing ser- um, session with us in the future and things like that, um, if, you know, if you want to be involved. Um, yeah, there is that sort of option in there. So um, I just need permission to see it. But yeah, that's basically what we have right now for um, the script. And I have a question. Um, yeah, go ahead. Quickly for the tasks. So 
Remove filter. <laughs> Can we go to the very first task? Mm -hmm. um, for the enter terms into search entry. I'm concerned about this. How would I get this to prototype out? Because this is on my end and I'm just confused because um, everything is like, I mean, what we could do is just literally have them click on the search bar and then it would bring them to the next screen, which would mm -hmm. have the entries already set, but um, they wouldn't be manually typing anything. Does it make sense? Yeah. Uh, is that okay? I mean, I think it's okay. I think it's okay because it's also one of those things with limitations like thickness of prototyping. I mean, like you said earlier, there is there is a way that like you can kind of replicate like a act an actual like typing, um, I don't know, interaction experience with Figma. Uh, there's like, I think I saw one example of a Figma file that does that and you can just kind of copy and paste it um, and kind of replicate that here. Yep. I'm not St sure how- Steal it from that thing. <laughs> steal that I think idea. it's literally open <laughs> to everyone. I, I need to find it though. Uh, Cause I think for the other project we were trying to use that and we came across some issue and I forgot what that issue was. So we ended up not using it. Um, what was it? It was, I don't know, like the issue that we came across. I'm not sure. There oh. was there was some reason why we didn't use it. Um, I think maybe it was actually a time issue, so I'll try to find it. I need to ask um, Sunny like about it, like Kayla. Okay. So I'll take note of that. Um, um, can we go back to the tasks? Sorry, okay. I just worry. want to know exactly what it is so I know what to do. Um, that is potentially relevant term. Oh, so Howard. Um, are our task A and task B different if we model it the way that we're saying? I think, um, I think when I added this one, I think I meant to ask this about, uh, to you earlier, but then um, I think the idea behind like that task over there, let me, let me go back, like add a potentially relevant term mm -hmm. was drawn from, I think here when oh, like good. ideally like you would be able to, like maybe instead of like you would see like AG, I don't know what this is AGP but you would see this somewhere here and then, like that task would just be like oh yeah like and then click clicking on it. on it would take you to the next screen which adds it into the visual yeah okay okay um you might end up having, you might end up having more screens than you would have mostly just because then you can have a screen per step even though you have... yeah 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 exactly and could, that's totally you could just like duplicate and each click could just take you to the next screen but it mostly looks the same Right, which is fine. I just want to know exactly what I would change. So I think, wait, do you see me? Are you here? Are you, um, where are you? I'm, I don't know, but my mouse is next to your mouse. So, oh, um, wait, Sigma. okay. <laughs> hello. <Thanks. laughs> um, so I guess I actually have to add this in then because I'll it just replace one of them words with it. It really isn't that big a deal. <laughs> like, no right. one's going to go, where's that word that was there before that no one's seen? No one cares. Just change um, the word. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the only thing is, if I do that, then, well, every single one would have to be changed, but it's not a giant deal. I'm only saying that because then it fits in with the task that's on the script. Because Sure, it, surely that pop-up with that popping down with them words only exists on one screen. Um, Yes, it's only on one screen, but the... So, the, so you duplicate that screen, what looks mm -hmm. like that, change this list to have lists with A, G, E, P in it, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put That's a good without idea. AGP in it. So you just duplicate it, take that out and put it into that space. And then the click on that would take you to this screen with other potential things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good that's, idea. That's that's literally how my brain went. Like, that's how I do it. I just make a new one, steal a bit, done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that works. Okay, cool. And then what were the other ones? Let me go look again at the script. I have a million tabs open, as always. Um, Only a million. Are you even trying? I know. <laughs> wait, wait. God damn it. Nicole, do you mind just going to the... Yeah, there we go. Okay. okay. No, no, no. Sorry. Oh. Go back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, add metadata filters into search entry. That one was just... Was oh. The control the the, yeah. Yes. Okay, great. And then interact with the advanced mesh builder. Ooh, oh, that, yeah, that, was, that was the one we were I, talking about. That that one might not get done. <laughs> yeah, that's the right That here. one's bizarre. Um, <laughs> so I was like, highlight. I mean, sure. I can do that. I could do that, though. Like, the I guess the way that I would do that is, like, 
I could just go step by step with the screens, which isn't impossible to do. It would just be, wait, it'd be just clunky because you like I said, it goes back to like duplicate screen to click one thing to move right. to the next screen, which is all the same other than this one thing. Like I yeah. said, you're making lots, you're making a screen for every step, even though it wouldn't be a screen for every step in reality. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really mind doing that. I'm just wondering, like, I'm if trying you, to if do you, it. It'll take me five minutes, I mean, but. Do you do you guys be, have you been guys been building like symbols in there so you can just like duplicate symbols or when you edit one symbol it edits everything? Have you been using that sort um, of system? We have components, but for certain of these like uh, like dose or chemical action, those are not. I think what what is a symbol is just simply the tag itself, and then of course the, you just change the field. But if this was a symbol, it's inside it. Would be, yeah, but what is totally fine with me is if I literally just take what this is right now and duplicate it five or six times and then start from the top and just delete just the delete, thing. delete the bits out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. That'll take very, it'll be super quick. So I'm not concerned about that. What I'm concerned about is whether this would even make sense because as the user, are they going to be looking at this and like, okay, well, I'm not really doing, I mean, no, I think it, it does kind of help to like let them know that they can do it piece by piece. Um, Cause I think what I'm really focused on is that they're able to do and or. So I don't know. Anyway, do you, do you think that this is a high val value item for user testing, Nicole or anyone? Hmm. I, okay, I don't know. Yeah, that was something I wanted to ask him, but I'm also not sure. Yeah, it was, it was the part I feel like it's less important. So well, mostly because awkward. there are evidently very capable mesh building systems that already exist yeah um, mm. and they can you can you like you can build all the things into it and it builds a mesh thing and you just copy the entire string out of it and that gives you this crazy long string of search with and or functions all the way through it and that's fine but it. we don't the idea was we're trying to not do that we're trying to make it easier we're trying to do the the search system that basically does mesh building automatically that's the kind of the idea of our main search system, as far as I understand. Is we yeah, kind of co we, we are it. doing mesh building, we're just not doing it and calling it that. We're, mm -hmm. we're basically going, well, if you like this, what about these possible things? Cool, select them, great, add them in. So it adds into this very big search function, but we're doing it in a way that's like more visibly sensible in the sense that like these are the main things you cared about. These are like tertiary and secondary things that are either very related or possibly related and that's um, kind of the that's kind of the visualizer behind it that with the whole tagging system exists yeah i'm i think with that i think it should just be tabled so i'm gonna move it to drafts that's why it disappeared nicole sorry and i was like i got um, <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. It's, I think it's, it might get it might get used in the future, or it might be yeah. utilized. So but for, there, for now, but it's not. The, yeah, 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 it's not yeah. a priority. Yeah, we got stuff here. So, um, who Good is? Oh, oh, other people have to go. I actually have to go in a minute as well. Um, but yeah, same here. So, what is there? You guys share the link to the um, uh, the script. Uh, yeah, yeah, the script. Okay, I'll do that right now. Uh, there. Um. Okay, I put it there. What is the? Oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> Warm up, warm up. Uh, where is it? Okay. That one is just these. Ooh, I need to do those slides like yesterday. What? Um, I'm gonna actually message you guys about it. But what? Um, before I before we all go, what are the things that have to go? I'm wondering if. Do we have any slides summarizing Corona Y already built? I feel like that's already we've done that many. I think there's enough things out there people oh. have done there's probably does that already exist somewhere i'm sure of it yeah we have like because we we did it we've done like what six people have done talks we've done talks like this is not a new <laughs> this is not do you a think new i could take thing. a look at it and then maybe if there's anything that has to be added that's just specific to the components that we've designed i would be able to just add one or two slides and maybe just take one or two slides of what already exists because it's also meant to be very short it's just supposed to um explain the you know what corona y is and then also give them a preface of like okay you're gonna go you're gonna click on this and this is what these mean so maybe for this so previously nicole we had done it for like bridges notes and claims but maybe specific for this project it would be like tags 
um, what the abstract thing looks like with the search. I don't know. I'm like saying that randomly, but maybe it would be something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, as in, so this idea behind the slides would be like almost a demo with some of the things they're going to be interacting with, but explaining them before they interact with them. Is that what you're saying? Am I hearing that right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm making sure I'm understanding. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of course. Um, so yeah, maybe somebody can just like link me in Slack um, to the slides that are, are that already exist and then I can go. Oh, where you can actually there. go to a website and there is a presentations tab. And oh, cool. there are two yeah, presentations there's, that Slava yeah, there's, did. The, there's presentations there. We've also got probably in communications. We've on the communications Trello board. I'm sure there's probably a few presentations hanging around. Maybe the main board. I can't remember. I have to go find them. But there's well, we does that. Did how much of um when we did our big big talk? Did we summarize Corona Y then? Yeah, but not really from the perspective of literature review functionality. Hmm. Yeah. I don't. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a look at this. I don't. Yeah, I'll take a look, and then if I have questions, I'll I'll put that in Slack. Cause. Mm. Okay. Cool. You guys have uh, done amazing work, and you just need to keep patting yourself on the back for the amazing work you're doing. And I'm really sad that I don't have enough time to be able to do more with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. You guys have all been super helpful, and it's it's fun working with Carmen and Nicole. They're cool. Yeah, amazing work, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. you're all you're all kicking ass and uh, taking names. So well done. Keep doing that. I will I will have a look through this script now and see if there's any. Thing I can feel like need editing on changing. I mean, the thing that's always been uh, really pushed by the course I'm doing is like really, really cementing the idea that we're not testing them. We're testing our ideas, and none of the thing. If they if they make mistakes, it's not their mistake. It's our mistake. So, just trying to make people understand that whenever you do a user testing, you're not really testing the user. You're testing the thing that you've made, and if it actually makes sense. So, yeah. it's a really important point to make a put across. I always find. Yeah. 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 Cool. That's helpful. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Cool. Catch you later. Bye, guys. Good night. Thank you. Bye.